Hey everyone, this is a special edition of Three Questions, and I have my friend Dwight Carter. And uh, I had to, we Dwight and I did this before, but I had to do it with the soundboard. So Dwight, welcome to Three Minutes uh, with George Cross. Glad you could be here today, and uh, <laughs> we've been just messing around with this. And I actually asked Dwight. Uh, what his theme song would be if he was doing it. And he picked an old classic by one of my favorites, Run DMC. Let's see if this actually works. <laughs> All right, Dwight. Welcome to Three Questions. I'm glad you could be. It's awesome, hey? Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate <laughs> it, man. Appreciate it. Let's come out. Hey, this will, this will be out pretty soon, but Hey, I wanted to start, we, we do this series on three questions and, uh, just kind of talking about some of the educators that inspired us in our lives and some of the things that you would do back if you can go back in time. So the first question, Dwight and Dwight, I've known, uh, is actually probably one of the first people I I've, I've actually met connected with on Twitter years ago. We've had him on the podcast. He's a brilliant leader and just awesome, awesome friend of mine. And so bright, uh, or Dwight, the, the first question. I want to ask you is when you look back at your, you know, education, when you look at your career, um, who's a teacher that had an impact on you and what did they do that, you know, kind of sticks to you, with you to this day? Yeah, it, it's three teachers come to mind. My third grade teacher, Miss Sinecki, Penny Sinecki. She was absolutely ph phenomenal. Sixth grade teacher, Zeta Modis, Moses, excuse me. Um, and then my eighth grade um, art teacher and Mr. Sheldon. Uh, but I'm going to select uh, Mrs. Sinecki. Mrs. Sinecki, she was phenomenal. She basically taught all the students, all the kids in my neighborhood, on my street, actually. And she took a, a liking to me. She really poured into me. Uh, she encouraged me to, like, really think critically on my own. She pushed me. She challenged me. Um, but she also incentivized learning for me um, and used um, positive words of affirmation. And that's when I first found, like that, found out that my love language is, is words of affirmation. So uh, I became a, a phenomenal student because of Miss Sinecki. And that, that's like, that's, you know, that's really thinking about kind of my interactions with you and probably that influenced you a ton to do the work that you're doing, but it obviously influences you in kind of how you interact with people too, to this day. Absolutely. I think uh, it's something that, um, I think a, a positive message or that one word can really change someone's day, that positive word can change someone's day. So that's something I really take to heart and think, think hard about. Um, but I also feel horrible when I say something that, like, that I know hurts someone's feelings or that may have deterred someone from taking the next step. So I, I really take that to heart. Yeah, one of, my, one of my goals when I interact is that with every person, and I, I don't do this every day, I try my best, is that I want to be the best interaction that every person I come into contact has in that day. So yeah. I absolutely love that. So shout out to Mrs. Sinecki. That's my, that's my shout out horn. All right. Administrator. And I know that you could probably list a ton because I know you work with and mentored so many administrators as well. So like when I know that you want to probably list as many as possible, but one who's one that sticks out in your mind. Uh, first person come to mind is Mark White. Mark White uh, was, um, uh, my principal when I was a teacher at uh, Gahanna Lincoln High School, then he hired me as an assistant principal and our friendship careers professionally, personally took off from there. Uh, we've co-authored co uh, two books. We have a third one, a second edition coming out in a couple months um, to leaving schools um, in disruptive times. Uh, so he's just been instrumental in my growth. Uh, he's really poured into me. He would uh, ask me challenging questions to see what I was thinking, uh, which was, weird to me at first, but he truly wanted to know what I was thinking. And then and, and the, in the process, he was developing me and pre uh, prepping me to be an administrator at some point. So he's one that I owe a great deal of my um, education and success to. It's actually funny that when um, you say this, I was, when I first became an assistant principal, I applied for a job and I actually didn't want to do it. And I had an interview with the person who was principal and we fought in the interview that he was hiring and we argued. And so I was like, that was the worst experience I've ever had. And he called me a day later and said, like, we'd like to offer you the job. I'm like, are you kidding? Like, that did not go well at all. And he's like, you're the first person who disagreed with me and challenged my thoughts. And what I need 
is someone to push my thinking. I don't need you to agree with everything. If you think I'm doing something wrong, I want you to tell me, but when we walk out, we're still a team and we got to be on the same page, but I need that different perspective. So I think yeah. that's something that's really shaped a lot of my thinking. So I think I'm really, you know, happy that you shared that. So, yeah, yeah. He's a phenomenal guy. He truly is brilliant. All right. Special air horn. All right. Okay. Last one. So we all look back at our teaching career, look back in education and there's things that we wish we could have done. You know, we all probably want to send those apology letters to the kids we had in our first year, you know, thinking about what we know now. And so we've grown a lot in the profession. So if you were to go back in time and at the beginning of the career with everything that you know, now, what advice would you give to yourself in that first year? Immediately chill out, <laughs> chill out. It's going to be okay. Tomorrow's going to come. You're going to do fine. You make a mistake. Don't worry about it. Adjust, pivot, and move on. You'll be fine. Your kids are going to be fine. They truly are. Um, focus on relationships and just chill out. Like I was so uptight and so stressed um, that I don't remember much. I remember my interactions with a lot with my students, but man, I was just so uptight outside of school. It was ridiculous. <laughs> truly was. So I would say just chill out, relax. It's going to be okay. Did you, did you, I don't know if this is just me, but like, I, I cried in my first two years like, all the time. Is that, is that just a George thing or is that a George thing? I didn't, I didn't cry. <laughs> okay. I don't know that makes me feel better that you said that. I, I did some stupid things. I've said some stupid, stupid things. I had a lot of grace granted to me by yeah. my principal, um, Denny Souter. Shout out to Denny. God rest his soul. He was a phenomenal guy. He gave me a chance. Um, but he really, he was patient with me. I'm very, very patient with me. So, um, like I said, I would just tell myself and I still tell myself, man, just relax mm -hmm. man, chill out. Everything's gonna be good. Yeah. It, it reminds me what, so I remember probably my third year, we had someone who came in and spoke and they said, never let an eight year old ruin your day. And <laughs> I felt that was like, that was such good advice. Cause I was, you know, that kid hates me and, you know, getting upset and stuff like that. And then you realize like, Hey, the kid doesn't hate me. Something's going on at home. Something's happening. And I'm just like the easiest person. And then you think about in your own relationships, we're often on the hardest on the people that, you know, who care about us the most. Right. The other thing that reminded me of what you shared. Um, and I think this is, was powerful. I, I made a mistake in my first year of teaching and a, a parent called and complained and it was something that I did. And I was like, kind of embarrassed about it. And my administrator uh, had us both in the office and we're talking and he's like, you know what? George is really new to the profession. He has the be biggest heart. He's just awesome. He would never do anything intentionally. So, um, you know, let's, let's like really give him the benefit of the doubt here. He's, he's just awesome. Right. Parent walked out and, uh, you know, it was good. It was totally fine. And as soon as the parent walked out, the principal was like, what were you doing? That was so stupid. <laughs> and, uh, like he actually like legitimately told me how dumb it was. But he never said that in front of the parent, right? And it, it really, it, 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 I really appreciated it because I know I've heard stories of like teachers making mistakes and then their principal throwing them right under the bus, right? And it's like, you know, obviously we got to be accountable. And I was like, I got, you know, I got in trouble for it. But he knew that I was always trying to do my best by the kids, doing the right thing. And so, you know, I, I, I appreciate that quite a bit. So one last, one last question. I know this is just a bonus thing, you know, as we're in 2021, yeah. what's the best advice for you have for people going into this, this year? And just be ag agile and celebrate, you know, celebrate your successes, how, your, your progress that you make, how, regardless how big or how small celebrate the progress that you make, because you're making steps towards something that you want to achieve and just be ready to pivot. If we know, if we learn nothing else in 2020, we've learned that we have to pivot on the dime, um, re have some re resilience, persevere, and just keep moving forward. Awesome, man. And so shout out to all those educators and Dwight. Thanks for being on today. <laughs> Gotta give you the applause. <laughs> hey man, thanks for uh, hanging, hanging out and let me play with this, this toy that I got here. So it's a great time. We talked for about, uh, two and a half hours before this as well. So. Yeah. Sorry, sorry for keeping you away, but hey, thanks for being here, Dwight, and thanks everyone for taking the time to listen.